Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the superposition principle. Uh, what does it mean? You probably already know about it from Physics 1, Physics 2, even Physics 3 for me. Uh, but we're going to discuss how in quantum mechanics specifically it's pretty weird. And then we're going to discuss how it's not really that weird. So let's get into it. Superposition principle uh, in Physics 1 you probably learned. Superposition principle simply is... Uh, Johnny pushes on the box with 5 newtons, and Timothy pushes on the box with 10 newtons. And then, so what does that equal? It means they both push on the box with 15 newtons. Basically, simply put the addition of vectors. Okay, well, you learn that force is a vector, you learn that velocity is a vector, all these things are vectors, you learn what a vector is, and then you say, oh, guess what? In this theory, we can add these vectors, and we call that the superposition principle which is a result of linearity, which was the last video. So good for you if you watched that. Um, then maybe in physics two, you got into wave motion, you know, simple harmonic motion and stuff, and you got into waves. And you said like, oh, we have constructive and destructive interference, which is actually, turns out, a form of the superposition principle. So why can waves like add on top of one another? Well, the way I like to think about it is, Let's say we have a wave here. So this is like me, you know, whipping a rope or something. Every one of these particles on here you can think of as being simply displaced by some displacement vector from the equilibrium position. So if that's a vector, and then I give it, you know, some other whip, I whip it, a, you know, another way, maybe this way, then I get two vectors adding together, again, it's just the addition of vectors, right? And then you get back to into physics three, and all of a sudden you have a point charge, you know, you get an electron or something, and you got an electric field, uh, which would be the other way. So you get an electric field towards the negative charge or something, then you got two negative charges, so you get double the electric field. And it's back to just simple addition of vectors because E field is a vector. We learn in physics three or E and F. So we get into quantum mechanics, and all of a sudden, superposition principle gets really weird because now it doesn't seem like it's specifically the addition of vectors. All of a sudden, it's like freaky. And the reason is because, like, you get things like, uh, for example, one, one example that I, I know a lot of professors like to use is the Mac, or the Mach, uh, I think Xander, something like that, interferometer. And so what that is, is you have a beam of light coming in, and you have a beam splitter. That's a beam splitter. And what a beam splitter does is half of the beam goes up here, and the other half goes down here. So some goes through and some bounces off. And you have a reflector, and another, that's kind of bad, another reflector bounces in, another beam splitter, another beam splitter, right, and then a detector here, and a detector here. So we have D, um, I don't know, one, detector one, and detector two, right, and we have this incident beam here. Of photons. So what happens is light comes in, hits the first beam splitter, beam splitter one, and this is beam splitter two, hits the first beam splitter, half of the beam goes up, half the beam goes through, bounces off these mirrors. Uh, I should like, this is a mirror. Bounces off these mirrors, comes back to the second beam splitter, half of each beam so half of this beam goes through and bounces off. Half of this beam goes through and the other half bounces off. And then if you just tweak um, to things like polarization in, in different aspects of the incoming beam, you can get uh, destructive and constructive interference so that you only receive a signal in one of these two detectors here. It's pretty simple um, once you understand all the parameters of uh, the interferometer. But now we look at the same example here and we think, okay, well, what if we just send one photon through? 
then we've got a problem. Because if I have one photon, first we get to this first beam splitter. The whole, the whole discovery of Max Planck with the photon is that a photon cannot be split into two pieces. A photon is quantized. Just a photon, there's no smaller thing than, of light than a photon. So it gets to this, we say, okay, it can't be split in half, so clearly it must uh, make a choice. So it chooses to go either up or down. Let's say it chooses to go up. It comes to the second beam splitter, chooses to go up again, it goes to D1, or it chooses to go to D2. So you're like, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Well, in that case, we lose any ability to choose if it goes to D1 or D2 with that thought experiment. We say, if it's one photon, there's no constructive or destructive interference because it's just one wave and it can't split if it's a single photon. So we, it should just be random if it goes to D1 or D2, no matter what we do to this incident, this incident beam here. So that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's a problem. In real life, what happens is you can still choose if it goes to D1 or D2. So that's like kind of bad. Because, like, let's say we sent two photons through. Two of the photons come through. If they hit each other constructively, then they just actually multiply the energy of the two photons by four because the electric field in the waves that make up the photons has just doubled its amplitude, making the energy within the wave four times, so you just created energy. Or, better yet, they destructively interfere with each other and cancel each other out, and all the energy just goes away. It's like, okay, that's neither of those cases obey conservation of energy, which we know to be true. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is the quantum mechanics version of the superposition principle, which is that, in the, for example, in the case where I send one photon through, it takes both paths at the same time. Okay, the cat is alive and dead in the box. That's what Schrodinger was saying. This this thing in here, this photon as it comes through, must take both paths and then when it gets to the second beam splitter, constructively or destructively interfere with itself. It's weird, but that's the only way that we can get this, these experimental values that, that, we're, that we're, we're finding in these experiments. So, okay, that's weird. That's freaky. Because that's completely different than John and Timothy pushing on a box. Okay, that's like that's like freaky deaky. That's out of this world. But it turns out that it's not that freaky. And let's get into why. So a guy who's pretty clever found out that, okay, well in physics one, or he thought that in physics one, superposition principle was the addition of vectors. Physics two, still. Physics three, still. But then you get to quantum mechanics and it gets weird. It's like, that's not the addition of vectors, that's something different. We got particles doing two things at once. And then he thought, okay, wait, maybe it is the addition of vectors. So and then a bunch of really smart guys got into one building for a week and a half and said, oh shoot, yeah, it actually is the addition of vectors. And all of quantum mechanics can be modeled with vector space, a uh, vector space, that's, that's how you do quantum mechanics. But, I, and I know what you're thinking now, how can a particle going up or down be a vector? Well, it, it can be. You just say that that's a vector. We basically, what we do is we say that a quantum mechanical state, which I'll call U, you put in this, it's called a ket, this is Dirac notation, bras and kets. We just say that this vector is the state of going up, or is the state of going down in my interferometer. But it can be anything. Maybe it's the spin up of a particle or the spin down. And so, in the case, we'll say this is u1, this is u2. In the case where we have our interferometer and we have this particle which goes up and down at the same time, we have two two vectors, two states, quantum mechanical states of this photon existing at once. That is the first state going up 
and the second state going down, existing at once. Once again, superposition principle boils down to the addition of vectors. It's just that the vectors in this case are a little more abstract than before. So hopefully that cleared some stuff up. This was just a quick introduction to superposition principle. Uh, next time we're going to get into an introduction to quantum mechanics and apply this superposition principle to, um, to uh, it describing state spaces of uh, quantum mechanical particles. And then hopefully we'll get into quantum entanglement after that, knowing all we know. But anyway, thanks for watching.